Let's go live to Sydney now. That's where we find the Australian Banking Association CEO, Anna Bly. Anna Bly, thank you for your time. Are you breathing a sigh of relief uh, this morning, looking at this report and seeing the response to it from government? It could have been a lot worse for the banks. Uh, well, good morning, Laura. Uh, I don't think anyone can read this report with any sigh of relief. Uh, what this report is, is a very uh, tough uh, roadmap of comprehensive change and reform. And really, uh, today is when the action has to start. Uh, banks have already established a special task force representing every bank. Uh, we'll be convening that uh, early this week and getting on with turning these recommendations into a work program and getting on with it as quickly as we can. There's no major structural change to the way our big four banks operate. So what is there in this report stopping banks from reverting to, well, back to dangerous vertical integration? This report has, uh, contains 76 recommendations and they go right across the board, banks, superannuation, insurance, uh, financial advice. This represents uh, reform from the top to the bottom uh, of the customer experience. Uh, there are many, many recommendations for changes that will be new entitlements for customers, new protections for customers and it does go to the heart of how banks do their, uh, run their businesses and it will mean big change. Uh, and I think it's the kind of change that customers are going to feel. But overall, banks understand after the kind of year they've had and after the experience of a, a very, very rigorous and diligent Royal Commission, uh, you can't go through that and not come out of it learning some lessons uh, and being a lot wiser. And I think banks absolutely understand that earning back the trust of the Australian people has to be their number one priority. Well, what will customers see in terms of change and how quickly uh, will they see it? We're living in an era where we go less into you know, um, street front branches. How will this day-to-day -day interaction with the banks change? Well, some of the things that they will see are uh, very big, um, important changes to the code of banking practice and to legislation uh, that will enshrine their rights uh, to make complaints, to have those uh, complaints enforced. But it's also what they won't see. Uh, the Commission has uh, recommended that uh, hawking, uh, that is, you know, coal calling people around insurance and superannuation should be outlawed. So it's not only the things they will see, but some of the things that will be removed from the system, uh, all for the better, I think. Mortgage brokers are warning that changes in their space today will push up interest rates and give more power to the banks. Is that your view? Mortgage broking is a critical part of uh, the housing uh, lending industry and to banks. Uh, whether you're a large bank or a small bank, the uh, majority of mortgage loans in Australia are now written through mortgage brokers because customers, uh, customers find it convenient. They, uh, they seek the assistance uh, in what can be one of the biggest or the biggest uh, financial decisions of their lives, uh, they seek the assistance of a broker. Uh, that broker is critical to competition uh, and through that very important for consumer experience. Uh, so I do understand why uh, very big and potentially quite radical changes to their remuneration model would be of concern to brokers. But I think it's up to everybody now, uh, including banks, uh, to work with legislators uh, to make sure we find a workable alternative that uh, will look after the interests of customers and ensure the viability of the mortgage broking industry. Wouldn't it be better culturally if borrowers were to pay mortgage brokers for finding a loan, that would you know, remove any kind of uh, risk of corruption, wouldn't it? Uh, the Commissioner has delved into this issue very deeply uh, and he has concluded exactly as you say that uh, making it absolutely clear who the mortgage broker works for, that is the customer, uh, and therefore charging the fee to the customer, so the customer uh, really controls the relationship, uh, is critical to removing uh, any conflict of interest in the way that that business is run. Uh, but it is a big change to suggest that, um, that customers put their hand in their pocket to pay the broker instead of banks who currently, and financial institutions who currently make that payment. Uh, but I think that these things can be managed. Uh, the government is proposing to do this as the Commissioner recommended over a couple of years uh, to get the model right. Uh, I do think um, mortgage broking is critical uh, to competition. It is 
particularly critical to the ability of smaller banks and online banks to be very competitive in the market. So banks want to see a mortgage broking industry that's viable, that's thriving and uh, working in the interests of customers. I think we can achieve that. We're just going to have to be careful and thoughtful about how it happens. But this is the one recommendation that Josh Frydenberg has stopped short on fully uh, recommending that borrowers should pay mortgage brokers up front to, to find a loan. Are you critical of the government for, for not following through on that? Well, what the government has said they will do is uh, establish a review to have a look at how that could all work in practice. Uh, I don't think um, it's a bad thing to be a little bit cautious on this. The last thing we would want to see is uh, mortgage broking uh, become an unviable part of the industry. It is critical to the ability of new banks, online banks, uh, smaller banks uh, to compete and, to, and for that competition to put pressure on prices for all consumers. So getting it right is important uh, and being a little cautious about the pace of the change I think is not a bad thing. Andrew Thorburn and Ken Henry just finally of NAB were singled out for scathing criticism. Why should they remain in their positions? Well, I think it's very hard to form a judgment on someone's character after only one interview with them, and that was the only opportunity that the Commission had. I know these two uh, men. I've sat around meeting tables with them. I've sat uh, in, in whole sessions looking at big reforms and big changes. Uh, in my experience, they've always been uh, adopters and promoters of change and reform, not resistors, uh, and I have every confidence that they will continue to play that role, not only in their own bank, uh, but in importantly across the whole industry uh, and I think at the end of the day they need to be judged by their actions uh, and I'm sure they'll be pleased to be well, that's, judged that's not the and held accountable. That is not the experience of the Commissioner though. Are you saying that he has got it gravely wrong? No, the Commissioner has uh, put forward his opinion. It's very important I think that he does so and he's entitled to do that. I'm just saying my personal experience of working with these two men uh, on big reform proposals uh, has been a different one and one that makes me more confident about what the future might hold. They've effectively been put on public trial here though. Uh, what shareholders and customers uh, think of them well, I don't uh, wish to read anyone's minds that might be watching this, but would you be at all shocked if they didn't stay in their positions? Laura, all of those uh, issues are a matter, obviously, for that company and their board and ultimately their shareholders. All I can say is I've worked with these two men. I've worked with them closely. I've seen them uh, in situations where people had to put up their hands for reform, for big changes, and I've seen them be some of the first to do so. Anna Bly, on a busy day, we thank you for your time. Thank you.